Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello creepy friends, welcome to Slams and Bobs where it is finally time for us to do our original Thunderbird episode review. I held off on this for a multitude of reasons. I wanted to be able to sit down and re-watch the episode over again with fresh eyes, I suppose, in a way. I didn't want to just kind of go into it going, oh, I know everything that happens, without being able to sit down as I normally do and analyse and just make little points, especially now we have both series to compare. I thought, as I mentioned over Twitter, that we were going to start with the very, very first episode, which is Trapped in the Sky. This probably wasn't the first episode I watched. I know my dad, as I've mentioned, was first generation in the 60s of it so this would have been the first episode he saw and you have to appreciate everything that it is the intro just catches you it's that music then you have the hood opening with his statue of Carano then you have Carano himself and Jeff and their little bromance going on I do realize from watching this through the f even the first episode just how much I'm missing Carano and Jeff Tracy it really just shows that they're a force that you kind of miss and I'm it makes me pine for them they are as I said such a bromance then we obviously skip to the disaster we have Tintin before we even have the five brothers I'm not gonna diss on Tintin's clothes vintage fan I'm in 50s today it's pre-60s but a lot of my stuff is 60s orientated so I actually want what Tintin and Penelope are wearing so no complaints from me there you've seen some of my clothes someone actually said on a video and I forget who it was one of the dresses I was wearing it's the one with the lilac -y and the Chinese collar is a Tintin outfit thanks for that that makes me feel good then when eventually all efforts to save the plane have failed they send in the thunder oh, they don't send in the Thunderbirds John gets wind of it send it down to Jeff and they get out on their very very first mission now before we go any further we're gonna watch the moment we first hear Alan Tracy speak together what was Alan's voice what was that okay father what the what was that that was not Alan Tracy's voice what was it? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Do you want to say it again? Born on call. Right, Father. Okay, Father. Sure thing, Dad. Yeah, Father. What is that voice? What is that voice? What is it? It's hilarious. I remember watching that back with my dad in the late 2000s. I, I think I just finished school and he wasn't working that week and we just said let's get together let's take the DVDs and we just had a Thunderbirds day and we watched it and we just we were in my granddad's house which in itself was stuck in the hot in the past because my granddad just we even had this shed on the back that he built this like conservatory made out of plastic it was rotting it smelled so musky it's my granddad's house for you basically but we just sat there and watched that moment and laughed it was so funny and it's not what alan sounds like who was alan tracy's voice in that episode do any of you know it's amazing okay father what scott is a little diva is he not how much is scott a diva i want i want this i want police i want someone to help me carry my equipment i want this i was thinking so we have all three cars on the runway waiting for fire flash to come down and land safely of course this is where i appreciate what happened in the newest series where technology fails the radios fail and then we see that the obviously the weight of the plane is crushing down on the three vehicles on the runway that come out of thunderbird 2 causing them to burn and explode this is also the moment where we see that our favorite characters have but two facial expressions we have this is the normal face, which you normally see them in, and then we have the serious face. When stuff's happening, and the eyebrows crease down, and the mouths are straight, and they're not happy. Jeff Tracy has the best version of this, and we don't actually see his face until the episode with the train. I can't quite remember that. So the reason that the plane fails, obviously, is because the hood plants a bomb on it that means if they land, it explodes. 
but they also have the added pressure of the fact that they could survive up there for six months but there's a problem and if they don't rescue them in two hours everyone will be infected by radiation and they will all suffer horrible deaths so it all ends well they save the whole plane i'm assuming tintin i've always just assumed from this episode that tintin jumps on thunderbird one or two with one of the boys and just goes home that way i assume that although really like with the technology and the way that it's enhanced and moved on now you would think that she could have just been picked up by one of them anyway the difference is suppose between this episode and the first obviously everything's a bit newer there's no kind of lounging area on the plane as such in the in the fire flash episode that we saw this year it is just literally rows of seats no smoking of course when they said you know seat belts off and smoke i was like oh, you can't do that now <laughs> no way i hate smoking i hate smoking i never tried it and never will the score on this episode is so timeless and it makes me miss it more in the newer series although they have suspense music it's not built and used the same way it is here it's it's actually a very clever trick when the rescues and the crafts are moving and the sets are interacting in that respect they're actually letting you build up that excitement for yourself and then suddenly when stuff happens boom on goes the music so you're already in suspense but then you're set straight into motion with the music it's not used in a way to help you build it's you're building that excitement yourself and that's something that we don't see in today's tv you're expected to use music is used to enhance your excitement throughout watching something the shots of real hands never gonna get old is it just suddenly they got these puppet hands and then suddenly these real hands grab bless it's still funny it's still funny what was the point now i've seen it and had a chance to rethink because we haven't seen it in the new series what was the point of scott's mobile control unit what did he do with that he did nothing the most you saw him use was that receiver this is actually a kabuki brush but you know it was like a little receiver like that that he would talk to virgil and john from and anyone else in a mission other than that he didn't really do anything with that big red station or any of the buttons or the screens the screens were always off it was kind of pointless and now you kind of look at it with a fresh eye and they've got obviously the wrist thing and they press their sides like the x-men <laughs> you know i just kind of it's that's not got a place in the new series and that's fine not everything from the original have a place in a modern day series and we accepted that after my review episode and not my preview episode did we ever find out the actual reason that the hood guns for the thunderbird so much did we ever find it out i i realized obviously he's after karana because he's his brother and he's living the life of luxury as jeff tracy's manslave admittedly but he's still living a life of luxury on nice uh pacific island somewhere did we ever find out what beef the hood has with the thunderbirds i know in the human movie they said that he'd abandoned the the hood said he'd abandoned them ben kingsley the hood still looks like ben kingsley the hood's eyebrows oh my god it's like the scouse brow before the scouse brow it's like do you think paul bearer god rest his soul got his eyebrows from the hood back to the point what motive does the hood actually have for wanting the thunderbirds dead and non-operational do tell the nixie looking at the set from the 60s and the set of now it's obviously been just brought up to date we have the pit or we didn't have the pit before we had jeff's desk obviously and the photos going around it's still a circular room but it's not quite the same jerry anderson i would have appreciated the modernization and i'm pretty sure his sons have been on board with the new series thus far we can't really complain as fans from that respect obviously we're fans we're gonna take digs in this the same way i take digs in stuff like wwe related i'm still a fan but if i don't like something it's my right as a fan to sit here on camera and voice it unfortunately if you're sending yourself out to the world that's what happens i don't always get nice comments and that's fine you know i'm not always going to be well received and like that's cool for me all in all for a first episode this was amazing you, for the 60s and the way that jerry anderson looked at things and said you know this is this but i'm going to look at this and say what can i do what can i do to bring the 60s into the modern day and try and think what things would be like i mean i've said it before the video phones the the screen phones that they have 
that is like i know i've said this before it's like skype before skype that is such forward thinking because no one was really thinking of that back then the actual invention of a beeped telephone and not one where you had to go around like that was cool jerry anderson was much like william shakespeare so ahead of his time in that respect the episode's suspenseful it builds up well it's got a good ending we find out the main villains were introduced to all the brothers not necessarily all their personalities yet but it's it's just getting you in that moment the thing with thunderbirds is that you can pick any episode and watch it there's no continual not like nowadays where let's compare it to the walking dead for example we know that the wolves are going to be a main factor in series six we knew that the cannibals had involvement in series five and they built that up and up and up and we obviously knew that emily kinney beth was going to have some kind of involvement it was building up to that moment where they rescued her this wasn't like that you know there was nothing really in thunderbirds that led as a progressional series it was just an episode after an episode after an episode and that worked back then that was totally cool back then and i love that from that respect i don't have to think to myself or oh, where where was this episode what was happening it's not like in 24 where you just you can't be out for a week or you'll just lose all connection of what's going on that was episode one I'm not necessarily going to do episode two next. What would you like me to watch next? I've got a couple, as I've said, that I've got in mind that I want to do. One of which is uh, Moving Your Dead. I think someone wants me to do... Uh, I can't remember what it is. I can see the name of it. Ocean Pioneer. Someone wants me to do Ocean Pioneer. Comment what you want me to do. The one with the most votes will get it. Or I would just see what ones you've selected and randomly pick one of from there. Thank you for being here. There's 112 of you now and I can't tell you what it means to me that you're commenting on Twitter, you're commenting on these. Some of you are on Instagram. It means the absolute world to me that you're here putting up with me chat about crap and requesting me to do stuff. It really does. Did anyone see the photos on Twitter from the Oxfam shop in my area with the International Rescue hat marked out? I've seen the t-shirt a couple of weeks ago and I nearly actually turned to them and said, can I buy that? I still want to buy both. I might actually ask the shop if I can buy those things and then I could wear the hat in every video. How cool would that be? Oh, the puppet episodes. I've got to mention that. There is a fund me thing going on. I'm going to post you to Super Mario Nation's Facebook down here. They have a funding for not one, but two new puppet episodes to come to mark the 50th anniversary i think they're in the hundred thousands now they may not quite have hit that yet i can't quite remember i've been following this since it launched last week do if you can fund this great here's all the details down here i've been following it there's a picture of it on my twitter as well do as you will i know we would all love to see that this is what we are here for this is what we love this is what we've lived for since we were children if in the original era or the 90s era or even an era where they repeated it who knows i will see everyone again follow anything you can to do with this i'm so high on it bye everyone